pray for that refuge, that protection, and that joy and celebration for Israel, for Jacob right now, for the reverberations that are going out from Pittsburgh and the fear that is present. David and Bathsheba and Uriah, we've spent the last month celebrating the love and the support and the gifts that Jonathan and Michal and Abigail have given David. The sacrifices they've made, the risks they've taken because they believed in his anointing, because they believed in his call to be king, a man after God's own heart. This is the hard part of the story. And this is the part that takes us all the way back to 1 Samuel chapter 8, when Samuel warned the Israelites about what would happen with them wanting a king that he would take. This passage is often titled, David commits adultery with Bathsheba and David has Uriah killed in our Bibles. David has been presented in scripture as a man after God's own heart, yet these are very two clear violations of God's law, the Ten Commandments. There's a further problem with the Hebrew translation in terms of the Bathsheba story. The verb from the Hebrew is to take, that same verb that Samuel used back in 1 Samuel chapter 8. Add to that translation issue the reality that this could not be consensual because of the power imbalance that the two different parties brought. When you have two different parties involved in this and one is a king and one is a constituent, that means each bring really unequal bargaining power and that makes consent impossible. So the way I understand this story is to be the rape of Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah. The fact that our English translators chose to change the verb and to soften it, saying that David sent messengers to get Bathsheba, not to take Bathsheba, is where this ancient word becomes a present word for me. A question of how we respond to the world knocking at our door. A question of whether we as people after God's own heart will be able to do what David did not do, to refrain from doing harm, whether that be in hearings on the hill, our workplaces, or in our churches. Or, if we're even able to do one better than that, and to do good, to be a source of healing, to open our doors to that knocking, and to be able to witness to what we have learned from our holy writ. I don't know how to preach this sermon without minding that ancient present intersection. That place where this ancient word meets our present life is why scripture is a living word for me. It's the place where my faith lives and where identity and purpose and call reveal themselves. It's the place where I get to see what salvation looks like and find hope for my transformation and for the transformation of the world. This intersection is where I am called to serve and it is where I am my fullest self. And from the evaluation feedback that I received from you all last month, I am hearing that the place where I am called to be is not the place where Epworth feels called to live. The evaluation feedback came in two groupings. One, a strong call to ask me to not drag politics into church, 
and the other gratitude for my pastoral care and the way that I am present and show up. Because there's a lot of need, right? There's a lot of work that the church is asked to do and that the church can do. And we are all on the same team, working for that same good United Methodist purpose of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And on that team, we bring different gifts. And in that work, we work from different places. And I feel like there's this apostle in scripture that calls that us functioning as the body of Christ. Different gifts, one God, one baptism, one spirit. And it's no secret that as a part of the United Methodist Church, we are part of the itinerant system. And so essentially our bishop and cabinet members are the matchmakers of the arranged marriages of clergy and churches. We know what a miracle true love is and the power that comes from such a match. And I want that for you. Here's the thing. If I leave that ancient present intersection for you, I will also be leaving my capacity to care and show up. Because I will be giving without receiving. And if I can't refuel my faith at that intersection, then this car can only go so far. And we all know what happens when we live and work from our human capacities and not God's power. And that brings me to the realization that I cannot give what I do not have. And so I will be requesting a new appointment this year. It doesn't mean that I will get one but I will be asking for one. And if I get one, we still have another eight months because they go from July to July, and it's still not a guarantee. I cannot give what I don't have, but what I can give you in those eight months, if that's the time that we have together, is a good ending. I can promise you that there won't be any caves and there won't be any spears. And I can promise you an identity and a visioning process so that we can make a way to share with the conference and to share with each other and own who we are in a way that can set up a better match and a good new beginning. And I can give you my love and my blessing. We've done a lot of living together in just under three years. And it's been beautiful. And I want you to know that I value you, and I want you to know that I value my time here. I have grown in my faith and my articulation of it and my understanding of my call because of you all. I love watching the way that you all have showed up for each other and the way that you have showed up for me as well. The way that you care for one another is beautiful here, and it's a powerful there will be time to talk about the identity and the visioning piece in the weeks to come. We'll also be working on developing some lay leadership. Um, we postponed the church profile and the nominations report of church conference um, so that we could have some time to work on it together um, from this awareness and this starting point. I will be here this coming week to talk with you and answer what questions that I can. But know that I love you, know that I have received love here, and know that there is much to celebrate, and we will. Amen. <laughs>